Have you ever wondered what a caster has to do when the video feed they're receiving looks like it is being broadcast on a Nintendo 64? Especially with a lot of broadcasts happening from home these days, it can happen that a caster has to cast a game where they can barely see what's going on. And well, that is exactly what happened to me recently while I was casting the College League of Legends matches. So whether you're a fan and are just curious to see how a caster has to navigate these situations, or you're a caster yourself looking for some tips, this video has got you covered. Before we delve into the topic, I want to make sure everyone knows there is no flame towards those putting on the CLL broadcast for this happening. This kind of thing does happen, and the CLL crew have been amazing doing a fantastic job with the limited resources they have. So I want to thank the Salty Runback Pod for putting on this show and making this happen. I love it. When a video feed turns into this, it can be really frustrating for a caster to deal with. As a viewer, it is tough because you just want to watch the game, but you can't tell what's going on. Now imagine you have to talk about the game live when this is happening. It can be pretty tilting. The times like this can show off the quality of a shoutcaster since their job is to help guide the viewer on what is going on. If you can turn off the video and still tell what's going on, you got yourself a good shoutcaster. But don't confuse this with going over every single detail that is on screen. There are great casters out there that do a lot with few words. And look, yes, I'm a caster that says a lot in a short amount of time, but that doesn't always make for the greatest cast. It's something I'm still trying to hone in on since it is more important to say the crucial details of what's going on in the game as opposed to saying a lot. I just wanted to clarify that before we move forward. So what do you do during these times when you can barely tell what's going on in the game? You won't like this answer, but it depends how bad it is. If it is so bad that you can't see any movement or even hear what's going on, the simple answer is to just message your producer about it. It could be an issue on your end and you might have to change a few settings through whatever you're getting the video feed from. But what if it is a systemic issue that there's no way that the producer can fix it during the game and you have to cast what you're being given? Well, let's look at that game I was talking about from CLOL that prompted this video in the first place. I'll take you over. I was not tracking to me. Uh, let's talk lane swaps. <laughs> because I do really like the lane swap that came through from the side of Fisher College. One of the first few lane swaps we saw in this current sort of meta uh, was Jinx because she can take turrets really quickly with her pass. And more importantly, you're keeping it away from that center lane and you're bullying out the Vayne. Vayne is great into melee champions, but one of the reasons why we don't see her in meta is because she struggles against other ranged champion so Fisher really identifying that punishing that from the get-go and making sure that now doesn't get to pop off oh. and just destroy the lane base. Johnny taking a lot of damage there from Psycho but it's weird to say <laughs> the support actually the top laner here getting a lot of damage there on to Bajani <laughs> but he doesn't have very much mana so he's just gonna have to clear out the wave especially the Cassante versus Nautilus matchup I even if it, we don't see it often you just re assume that Nautilus is just another tank, right? Just like how yeah. you'd play like an Orn into it, you'd play all these other things. So not expecting to see any kills there in that lane, more expecting this, in this top lane with the lane swaps that happened, where you sent both Poom and Jenkins into the top lane and then matched by scary Cherry Niles. Even though Niles did die initially, they still are able to at least keep up a little bit in CS against Poom. Notice in this clip how a random minion caster does a lot of the talking. When you first notice these issues as a play-by-play, -play, it is best to let your color do a decent amount of talking while you figure out what is going on. You should just message your producer, figure out if it's an issue for you or if it's for the whole broadcast. They'll know a lot better. And as a color caster, you should do something similar. After you finish wrapping up your point, toss it over to the play-by-play, -play, let them do a decent amount of the talking so you can message the producer and figure out what is going wrong as well. Because it could just be an issue for you or it could be the whole broadcast. You never know. Here, in this situation, I think RMC handled the situation amazingly. He had a great point that was building up to why the lane swap that we were seeing could happen at that moment and doesn't miss a beat worth talking for a bit about it. It's a point that I would expect a color caster to make normally, but it was long enough to let me check with the producer about what is going on. And if we're being honest, I don't think I handled the situation that, that great. I got a little bogged down with the skips happening, and it ended with me messing up a lot of the pronunciations of those words. Some really simple words, honestly. The best thing you could do in this situation is stay calm, reply to your color caster's points, or smoothly change the topic to something like a narrative point that is about the teams or the players that doesn't require needing to see what is going on on the screen and precisely what is happening. When we will see everyone kind of stacked up together and Trying to see if they can punish, like right now. Looking for Spyrox, but Yuji is there. The Void Rush not doing enough. Getting into the back line, the flash is away. They do get the snipe on a one, but it's gonna be the knockup on the keel. Trying to get the knockup back, but Yuji answers with a one for one in the mid. Big reason I wanted to show off this cast to people is to highlight an important factor that a lot of people might not consider even about their own casts. And that is sound. 
Sometimes you'll have a broadcast where the casters don't get any audio, and it can actually hurt the broadcast as a whole. You might not even realize it, but when you're watching the game or even casting it, you use audio for a lot of cues, such as flash, crucial abilities, even depths. In this clip, the video completely stops. You probably notice it. Let's watch it back one more time because I'm really proud of this moment. Getting into the back line, the flash is away. Then you get the sniper. I'm still talking my fast style here, but I do stretch out the call a bit more while listening as closely as I can for any sort of cue. Flash is a big one here. It gets me past what could have been a really awkward moment of having nothing to say in the middle of a play. So when the audio does cut back, I jump right back into my normal rhythm. Stopping Yuji from getting these dragons. We're stopping Yuji from getting these mites and getting control of the Rift Herald there. Wait a Ooh, minute. Uh, wait a I don't think you wanted that one all out on to Spyrex. And now Spyrex haven't tried to flash away. Crowling Despair followed up with the pullback from the No Tofu Strikes. They've got the kill for Bajani. Well, Yuji having to maybe hop over the wall because look at Poom putting down Chompers. Flashed away. Top lane. We got the root itself. The pullback in with the dredge line. They're going to get the kill on a Saranok. Trying to get the shield on the other side. But Keel losing out to Jenkins. Even if it was close, the inside of the pit, trying to get away from the Onko, Akil dies, double kill for Scary Jerry. Now, I wanted to include that last clip to show I'm not perfect. I'm not making this video to go, look how awesome I am. That's a given. In that last clip, I made many, many mistakes, but it's important to see these mistakes and learn from them for the future. First off, I got a lot of players' names mixed up. I could use the excuse that their in-game name didn't match their competitive name. That shouldn't be a factor for me. I know these players. I know these teams. I can't let that get to me, and I need to be better for the future. The other is a mistake I knew I would make before even going into the cast, and that is I tried to say too much in too short of amount of time. While it can help sometimes when used properly, here it put me in a bad spot. I was simultaneously trying to catch up with the action, while also trying to figure out where to go with the action next. If I had slowed down a bit in the top lane fight to emphasize the fight between Niles and Jenkins, it would have sounded a lot more natural. Just something to learn and do better for the future. Now we're at this dragon. This is Soul that could be picked up by Maryville. So everyone is committed for the play, waiting for the engage with the dragon like connecting, but Jenkins interrupting a lot from Zyko. The pushback, the not getting the charge, but they've got the dash. They've Who's killed it? into the back line, looking for Niles, but only getting the knock of the flash away, surviving the pullback in. Kill's gone, spiked down to there, boom, the carry no more. This is Maryville cleaning up, not losing a single member just yet. Heroic charge from Jenkins to interrupt, but they're pulling him back in. Double kill, clean ace with a triple for Maryville. All right, let's get back to praising me, shall we? Okay, not exactly. This play is a really good example, though, of how to handle these sorts of fights. Anytime I could see what was going on, I used that to help inform me of what I was hearing since there was a lot of noise happening at once that makes it a bit difficult to actually use the sound cues like before, especially the latter half of the call here. I got the information delivered here in a far more impactful way than I could have done probably in my normal style of casting. Honestly, I would be proud of this kind of cast on a normal, non-pixelated video of actual quality. But it isn't perfect. I had a moment I almost let the dip in quality affect me. But this is also a good example for any caster out there of what to do when you've made a mistake like that. And that is to simply ignore it and keep moving. Everyone wants to correct themselves, especially while talking. But often in casting, that can just put you in a bad spot. It is something I also struggle with. Eh, you know, so, and if you do so as well, don't beat yourself up about it. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Zyko, is he even at risk of dying here? I, let's see. Let's see how long it takes him to kill him. That's going to be the depth charge, getting the knockup. And there's so much attention on a Zyko, and he's barely lost a quarter of the health. Now pulled back in with a no of strikes. Uses the Titan of the Abyss to get the shield and the shield from the Dotting okay. Shadows helping out. It's taken them so long, <laughs> and he's still alive. They're tracing him so far at what's happening in the top lane. They're just ending the game. Zyko, honestly, is just a monster here for how much attention he got from the side of Fisher. Well, mid lane is going to be the flash with the heroic charge looking for Niles. Trying to get the pull back in, but the Keeper's Verdict okay. helping out. It is the burn there. Jenkins will get the kill credit, but back into the top lane we go as the base is starting to be sieged by Maryville. Fisher did manage to get their recalls off. Can they try and stop this right now? We do have Jenkins kind of looking for the flank there, but no boom. I don't think they find success without the AD carry. Another reason I wanted to make this video is to show off RMC a little bit. While this is mostly a clip of me talking on a long drawn out pick on a Zyko, what RMC does here is great. 
I made sure to keep the audience engaged on the fact that a kill on the Psycho wasn't all too important, and that we needed to keep our attention and focus on Maryville in the top lane. So when I eventually toss to RMC, we all know something might happen soon. And that's why how RMC handled this was great. Fisher had just gotten two picks, and the other three members of Maryville are actively pushing top. So RMC sets up very quickly who the important player for Fisher is. Even though he says a fight might not break out due to said player being absent, he still tosses it back to me just in case. 10 out of 10 color caster. He needs to be hired by more people. Oh, I guarantee you Maryville wants to yes, start they do. The That's what I'm saying. Fisher has to hope that that's not going to happen, and that's going to happen. We already see how they're posturing all five members here mid lane, waiting for the minions to crash into this inhibitor turret. And even look at Niles, finds Bajani looking for the flank and says, no way, get out of here. We're now diving. We're going into the base. We've got everything we possibly need with a nice keeper's verdict for doing nothing but keeping Spyrex alive. And then the all out use on the Niles, but Bajani so low. Elder snapping the kill for Solo Bolo. Well, the base has been taken. Flash away from Poon, barely surviving, but they got the Ardacious charge with the wind becomes lightning on top of him. Maybe even a ghost since we do have a little bit. Okay, he will survive. Sorry, we just had a little bit of a delay there as we are getting this inhibitor in the top side taken down. A fair enough cannon minion in mid lane doing so much damage to the Nexus Church. This should be the game for Maryville taking down the structures, going for final fights here, but it doesn't even seem that Fisher want to give him that luxury. Maryville are going to be the ones trying to force the issue, get him out of the fountain. They only got Poom, but it's all that matters. Keel trying to get into the knockup on a scary Jerry, but he's cutting back too easily. Jenkins having respawned as well, looking for the push back in. But this is game number one. Okay, Maryville are here to win. They don't want to lose a single game as they take right. this against Fisher. This is sadly the last call of the game, and this is where most of the issues arose. During this entire game, the one thing that was carrying me through was the fact that I could at least hear what was going on, and you might have noticed that the audio cut out as well during that fight. That wasn't me editing it, that's what happened live. This is also where I committed the sin of acknowledging the mistake and the issue mid-fight. Now, there are times where you can acknowledge these issues, but that's if they last more than a few seconds. I jumped the gun since this audio hiccup was a new hurdle and I face-planted it. But, like I said before, don't let those issues or mistakes from you or your casts, like if you're a caster, get you down. Just move past it and truck on. I'm happy with the end game call, at least still. It ended up being a good call for game one. Also, a cameo from our producer, Camcom, at the end there. I hope you enjoyed this little tour behind the scenes of what casters sometimes have to go through. Casting is a blast and I love doing it, but it's not always sunshine and rainbows. And if you're a caster and this helped you out, great. I'm glad I could help. Casters should always help each other out. After all, rising tides raise all ships. And I hope you enjoyed this content. Please consider joining the Patreon if you haven't already. I'm hoping that one day I can make enough from the Patreon where I can do content creation full time and get these videos out a lot faster. Also, make sure you like and subscribe and comment, blah, 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 blah. But until next time, peace out.